Today on 3R Ballistics, we test out three 12 gauge slugs that we have loaded in hopes of testing out some outer ballistics and terminal ballistics. The purpose of these slugs is penetration. We're going to see if we can get these to fly straight and get through a level 3 AR500 steel body armor plate. We are using a 3 quarter ounce tungsten fishing core uh, stuffed in some HDPE a 50 cal brass solid with the tungsten nail sticking out of the top and a one ounce fishing weight uh, also made out of tungsten. We put some grooves on the side to hopefully engage the rifling as we are using a fully rifled shotgun slug. So let's get out to the range and see what we can do. Okay, so we're out at the range. Uh, hopefully I did an intro for this. I don't I don't know. We're kind of rushed here and cold So we have three different projectiles that we've come up with a one ounce tungsten fishing uh, Weight I guess you could say We also have a three-quarter tungsten fishing weight that's encased in an HDPE milk jug Body I guess you could say we're hoping for some stability and then we have our 50 cal brass with a tungsten nail sticking out of it. Uh, I'm sure I did an intro and showed you all what those look like. Our first goal is going to be trying to get through a level 3 steel plate. We have two chronographs. We'll start with that. Okay so our first up is going to be the 50 cal brass which interestingly enough is uh, we cast it ourselves using the brass from what we shoot here at the range. So it's a 50 cal brass with a tungsten nail that we tried to harden. So first one up, let's see if it even flies straight. You ready? Yep. Here we go. Woo! 1,481 feet per second. I was aiming a little low center and it looks like accuracy is good, stability is good, and even separation from the Sabo as it comes in after the shot. What I also forgot to mention is we're running a Mossberg. This is a fully rifled barrel. Next up we have the 3 quarter inch tungsten um, fishing weight in HDPE. This one I'm real curious is if it's going to fly straight. You good? Good. Woo! 1252 on this one, 1243 on that. What's interesting while reviewing this is noticing that a piece of the HDP has come off. Now, it did seem to engage the rifling. We did get decent accuracy, but this is going to be problematic for the future slugs. And last up, we got the one ounce tungsten fishing weight. We're going to go more towards the top of the plate if this goes where it's supposed to. We'll go right above the center one. Here we go. 1,128, 1,120. Clear. Let's go check out the damage. Here it comes, flying straight and stable, and as we slow it down, we can also notice that it has engaged the rifling. So promising for the one ounce tungsten fishing weights as well. So walking up, I had this level 3 poly plate behind here just in case any of those went through. Woo -hoo -hoo. Okay. So this is our first one right there, the 50 cal with the tungsten nail. Almost nothing, did almost nothing. But these next two, holy smokes. That one ounce tungsten, um, it looks like it hit straight. We just didn't have enough velocity. And the three quarter ounce, same thing. It maybe not didn't hit so straight, but uh, yeah, those, uh, I'll move it right there. You can probably see how much how much bending it did to that. 
So we have three specialty rounds we're going to hit this with at the end of the video. Stay tuned for that. But we're going to continue on the testing with these three that we have made. We're going to try to catch these, encapsulate them for lack of a better word, in some polycarbonate. We are shooting two and a quarter inches of polycarbonate, hoping that it kind of reacts kind of like ballistic shell. So first up again is going to be the brass with the nail. You good? Yep. We're going dead center. Speed 1462, 1478, clear. Once again, we have good stability and very decent accuracy. As you can see from the Sabo spinning there, we also had good engagement with the rifling. As we slow it down, you can see the solid brass hit head first as the Sabo follows. That thing looks amazing in there. It did what you wanted to. Next up, we're doing the three quarter ounce tungsten with HDPE. Here we go. We're gonna hit it to the left of the other one. Good. Yep. Huh, we got 1280 up there and 843. And this is where we start having problems with the HDPE and the three quarter ounce tungsten fishing weight. As you can see, and as we slow it down, the fishing weight has wiggled its way out of the HDPE and the HDPE has turned itself backwards and actually hit with the back end forward. Here comes the gas seal and across your screen right now is the three quarter ounce tungsten weight which miraculously somehow hits head first and into the polycarbonate plate. So that one came apart and that's why we got the slow-mo camera. We noticed that the tungsten left the body of the HDPE and went wonky, but we still caught it in our ballistics polycarbonate. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna have the one ounce all by itself. You ready? Yep. Here we go. Well, that was interesting. Now, once again, as we slow this down, we will notice the one ounce tungsten weight fell very short. This is attributed to what we see going across our screen right now. We had put some filler, a little bit of glue to hopefully keep the one ounce tungsten weight from having Sabo slip. What that did is it kept it in the Sabo a little bit longer, drug it down, and as you can see on the bottom left of your screen, it uh, did not engage any of the rifling either. Okay, so that last tungsten, the one ounce, did not stay together. I had put some glue hoping that it would engage the rifling and so that we wouldn't have any Sabo slip. And I think that pushed it straight down. We did not get it on the slow-mo. I'll see if the GoPro and stuff does in editing, got it. But this is what I was talking about as far as our ballistics gel. It caught the first one, it caught the second one. I will try to show you there. There's a three quarter ounce tungsten. This is what these look like from the back. Hopefully that thing is focusing in on this. And we got lots of room left on this guy. So expect to see this one again. So onto the lead plate. This is obviously an ode to Tal Flater Mouse. I talked to Jeff. This is one, this is 32 pounds of lead. I believe the thickness was over one and a half inches, maybe one and five eighths is what we measured. Uh, looks like Swiss cheese. Uh, I was hoping that it would come up on the camera a little bit better that way. But these have been flying real good. We're gonna start with the 50 cal brass with the tungsten nail. See what it does on there. 50 cal brass, we're gonna go right for the center. Woo! Those have been very consistent. 1,462, 1,435. Let's go take a look. Whoa. 
walking up, this is the back. There's the 50 cal, but the nail isn't there. And if we look at the strike face, it went in. I can't believe that. It almost looks like it went in and through the back of this level 3A plate. Oh, baby. But there's the what it did there. You can see the back end of the copper. And this is what it did on the other side. Two more rounds, let's see if we can hit it. Okay, three quarter tungsten with HDPE. Let's see what we get with this. I'm gonna aim right below the other one and hope that we get it to go there. Okay, here we go. Did not. I have a feeling that HDPE is coming apart. Looks like there was a failure on that one. So we are gonna go straight to the one inch and hope that it doesn't, uh, doesn't stick as much as it did on the last one. Back to the lead plate, one ounce. You good? Yep. Here we go. Let's slow down this video and zoom in a little because this finally reveals what's happening with the one ounce fishing weights. As the Sabo crosses the screen, we notice a hole in it. This also explains why it hits the target before the projectile. The tungsten projectile is being pushed out of the back of the Sabo as seen by the hole in the center of it. So to fix this, we need more support behind the tungsten projectile, which in this configuration just tumbles to the target. Oh, there it is. And there's the proof that it was not flying straight. Huh. But it didn't stick to the sable. What did it do to the back? Uh, a little bit of cracking. Not too bad. Okay, and since these are supposed to be penetrating rounds, I do have ballistic shell, some of my synthetic ballistic shell. It's more to see what kind of energy will transfer through. But there we have a two by 12. So an inch and a half of wood that we're gonna go through. Ready? Yep. Clear. We got three quarter. Tungsten. Okay, hopefully this hits. This one's not been doing too well. Here we go. So for this last one, that, that three quarter tungsten went through the wood and all the way out the other side. So for this last one, we're gonna go ahead and put a two inch reinforced concrete paver 
And this is a one ounce tungsten. Good. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. So we learned quite a bit on our first outing with slugs designed for a very specific purpose. We plan on taking what we learned and completing the task of creating slugs that are both accurate, stable, and able to defeat level 3 steel armor. After that, maybe defeating level 4 ceramic armor. We'll see. So thanks for coming along on the journey, and until the next one.